Oh, it looks like, uh, looks like we need a new bar of soap. Luckily, I have some right here. <sighs> Wait a minute. That doesn't fit. That doesn't fit right. Better get the studio manager. Oh, Annie. A Ann, can you come out here for a minute? I was just wondering, uh, the next time we get soap, could we maybe get a bar of soap that fits into our soap dish? What? Oh. Wait a minute. Hey, how am I supposed to know that? There's no directions on this box of soap. Hey repeaters, welcome back to the studio. Lights are on, coffee's hot, of course, and the pencils are sharpened. So well, let's get right into this. We're going to do a sketch today. Before I show you my tools, let's talk about what we're going to sketch. Guess I'm going to do a little fanboy art today. I've always been a big fan of John Malkovich, and recently I watched him in a series where he played Hercule Poirot. I just got to thinking, you know, I really enjoy John's work, and um, he has such an interesting face, especially as, as Poirot. And so now that we know what we're going to sketch, let's talk about tools. I love starting my sketches with these blue leads. Now these are two millimeter mechanical pencils. You know, it's just the regular lead uh, pencils that you find and you can buy these blue leads from Statler Mars. And so that's what I use to start the sketch with. And then to finish, I use another two millimeter lead pencil with uh, 2B graphite lead. Now there's absolutely no reason you can't use a regular pencil, but I kind of like these. And this is what the packaging looks like. Ta-da! And along the way, I'll be using this mechanical pencil sharpener, which for some reason they call a lead pointer. And then you have to draw on something. And my current favorite is the Canson Universal Sketch Pad. Comes in lots of different sizes, but uh, this one's 9x12. 100 sheets, very inexpensive pad and a great surface to work on. So let's get going. So I start by marking the edges of where the camera can see and uh, give myself kind of the oval that uh, that you see many artists using to sketch faces. And all I'm trying to do here is get the generalist of proportions. I'm looking at my reference and I'm seeing, okay, well, the eyebrows should be down you know, about a third. And uh, uh, the other thing, uh, one of the things I want to mention on here is that uh, Malkovich's face is kind of tilted up. And so his ears are lower than they normally would be. It just happens to be the, the angle at which the, uh, the photo was taken. It was actually a, a capture that I took off of, off of the program, the TV program. And so the eye on the left-hand side is incorrect. I haven't uh, haven't noticed it yet, but uh, it's too low. It needs to be up higher because his face is angled, and right now it's just a little bit too far down. I'll catch it here pretty soon, but you know, that's why I start in blue. I'm not doing hardly any measuring on this one. This is all just my eye and my hand kind of putting down the relationships that I'm seeing. You know, this is practice for in toning up your, uh, your perception of uh, size and space relationships. And so, you know, this sketch is going to take me, I, I didn't want it to take me any more than an hour. And that's exactly what it took was one hour. And so, uh, you know, you move along at a pretty good clip. But um, 
you know, I wasn't even too worried while I was doing this whether or not it was going to look like John. I, you know, I hoped it would. Uh, you, you know, you hope that you've got your eye sharp enough that uh, that it's going to it's going to end up looking like him. But I guess I was going to be happy <laughs> as long <laughs> as it didn't look like a mutant. You know, something out of the Aliens movie. But uh, you know, at this point, you you have no clue as to whether whether this is going to work or not, and and that's one of the reasons that you do it. If you just do things that you know you're good at and and are going to be successful at, you're not going to grow as an artist. You have to be comfortable being in that space where where you don't know if what you're doing is going to be successful, if it's going to work or not, and oftentimes it won't. But you have to be okay with that. And if you are, you're going to get better. It uh, You just can't help it. And it's great to see that, oh, that progress that you make as you go along. But getting back to the drawing, a little bit about what I'm thinking as I'm drawing this. I'm not taking uh, measurements for any of the any of the spaces on here, but you will see me occasionally take an angle uh, just to make sure that things are kind of where they should be. Uh, sit there, just just like that. I needed to uh, raise that eye up a little bit. And now, one of the things that I love about Malkovich and his face is that he has, an, first of all, he has very small eyes, and second of all, his eyes are a little bit crossed. And so he just has this look about him that uh, it's really interesting. And so I wanted to make sure that that came across. I didn't want to miss those cross eyes because it's a little thing, but uh, now that you, that you know it, if you hadn't seen it before, it, you'll spot it right away. And uh, starting to work on his mouth, uh, the photo that I have of him his mouth is pursed a little bit, and that's another kind of a characteristic of what he does uh, when he's acting. He, uh, he has a really expressive uh, face, obviously, but uh, but his mouth uh, is very distinctive for him. So when I get to this part, I'm just roughing in the clothes. That doesn't have to be real accurate, but you want to simplify when uh, when I get away from the face, especially the eyes, I want to m make things a little more angular. And so you'll see that I do that with the clothing. Now it's not starting to look like him yet. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's so little information there now. You trust everything is in the right place. Uh, but, you know, as you go along and you refine... Uh, it should come more and more into focus. One of the suggestions that I'll make for you while you're drawing is to not question yourself too early, but if you sense that something is wrong, stop and try and figure out what it is. You know, you might think it's the eyes when in reality it's it's where the nose is. So you want to look visually down uh, well, let's say you want to look visually up from the the side of his nostril. Where does that intersect with his eye? You know, is it does it intersect with the edge of his eye? You know, where the tear duct is, or does it intersect farther over to the edge of the pupil or the middle of the eye? And you know, you just kind of continue to do that. You're making all these snap judgments, and uh, you know, you make a, a thousand or ten thousand decisions whenever you're you're drawing or painting and hopefully every one of those decisions are minute corrections and when you add them all up it's going to get you where you want to go but um, don't worry about it too soon trust that uh, that your eye is developing and that you're going to be able to uh, spot any flaws that you have along the way before you get uh, to drawing too dark you know, I only get into drawing darker like I am now when I'm pretty sure that everything is is in the right place or, or close to the right place. And, and if I know that something is incorrect, I will know that, okay, I need to take care of this whenever I go to the regular drawing 
one of the things about the blue uh, lead that I'm using on this is that it's not erasable. But I will tell you that uh, Prisma, I believe it's Prisma pencils, make a wonderful product called uh, Cole Erase, C-O-L-E-R-A-S-E. And the blue pencil is oftentimes what I use for this because it's erasable. And uh, it's, it's a terrific way in order to be able to get that blue line down there. Uh, I'll put that the link down in the description as well. So if you're not familiar with those, you may want to start with those rather than these blue LEDs because, uh, like I said, you can erase them and they're much more forgiving. Yep, see, doing a little bit more uh, angle checking. Noses can be rather difficult, but just kind of take a look at your reference, see where the planes are, and allow the strokes that you make to go in the direction uh, of what it is that you're trying to describe. Like right there, you have that upper plane of the nose. And uh, if I was to follow that with the horizontal lines, it would not read as though it were coming forward. So always be thinking about the direction of the lines that you're putting down. It's very, it's, it's really a great aid in order to be able to make something that looks convincing as far as what the surface is doing. You know, you're modeling something 2D that's actually 3D. So you use whatever whatever you can possibly do in order to get that reading like it should. And the direction of your lines is a great way to do that. The more you draw, the more your pencil is going to develop a, a calligraphy, the more, uh, the more you'll develop a calligraphy. Uh, when I draw, I, and I've always done this, as far as I can remember, uh, a lot of times I will draw in a very angular way, even though something is, you know, has a lot of undulations to it, I might just go straight through with a curved line or a straight line. And it, it just has a nice feel. It's something that, that I like. And it, it reads more like a reads more like a piece of art to me rather than than just a, a drawing of a person's face. If you put a little bit of your own personality into it, I think uh, eventually you're going to be much happier with, uh, with what you do. But don't try and force it. You know, just experiment with things and uh, you'll find that your style will come out. And when it comes out, people will start saying, oh, oh I knew that was your drawing just because it looks like you the way you draw. And you may not even notice it until someone points it out. Practice enough and uh, and it'll happen for you. So you see, as I'm working on this on the left-hand side that I just finished, I just went uh, and did a really fast strokes across there. And as I draw more and more, I'll break those planes down a little bit so that um, you start with the large size shadows or planes. And then you, as you're working, you'll break those up into smaller and smaller pieces. It's much easier to do if you work them large to small. It's going to read more of a cohesive thing than if you, you know, just start on the upper right hand side and work your way to the lower left hand side. Uh, I know that people can do it. I've I've seen them. I've worked with those guys, but um, you know there are a lot of people who this comes very naturally to, and. Um, and I, like I said, I've worked with uh, quite a few of them, but it doesn't matter how much natural 
talent you have. What matters is how much you work at it. Uh, the best guitarists in the world got that way, possibly because they had a lot of natural talent, but I will guarantee you they were practicing eight hours a day. And so don't, uh, don't be too hard on yourself when you're, uh, when you're working on this stuff. Just know that it'll come to you if you, if you want it enough and you're willing to put the hours in and the work, uh, it'll happen for you. <laughs> One of the problems with being a left-handed artist is I'm constantly smearing my drawing. No matter how, how much I try not to, I just do. I don't know if you guys uh, have that same problem or not, but man. All right, so now it's starting to look like John. We're starting, uh, well, it's starting to look like John has here, Coupero. But um, just uh, I'm feeling pretty good about things at this point. It, it seems like everything is pretty close to where it needs to be. And uh, as I get off into the lower left-hand part of this, you know, I, I loosen up a little bit. You don't want everything to be finished to the same amount if you're doing a sketch. You know, some of it can be unfinished, and that's okay. In fact, it's probably preferable, you know, as you get away from, from the eyes, if you're doing a face, get away from the eyes and the nose a little bit. Uh, I like to stylize things. Uh, you'll notice when I put in his left ear, <laughs> it's... a. Uh, it's a pretty stylized ear and I don't put a whole lot of detail in it, but I don't want your eye going there anyways. So that's okay. Ooh. <laughs> Checking the angles. Getting some general shadows in. And all the time while I'm drawing this, I'm still continually looking to make sure that we have about the right amount of space, let's say from from his brow line to the edge of his skull. You know, is that about the right amount of space? Um, is the length of his nose to the bottom of his eyes, does that look like that's about right compared to the photo that I'm working from? If it's too long, um, well, at this stage, <laughs> you should have caught it. But if it's too long, stop, erase it. You can draw, you drew it once, you can draw it again and you'll be much happier with it if you do. So don't ever accept anything on your, on your drawing that isn't the best that you can possibly do. And it's okay to just stop and um, move on to another drawing, either try it again or, or don't try it again, try something else. But don't get too too discouraged. You know, this is this is a long sketch for me, an hour. A lot of times, uh, if I'm doing my uh, my mugshot Mondays, we're looking at ten, maybe fifteen minutes per sketch, and uh, I'm just looking to try and get a a feel for what the, generally what they look like and and the expression on their face. So coming down to home stretch. Gonna put them in a little bit of a box on the bottom. You see how I just took and swooped down on his shoulder there rather than try and, and do that very realistic. This is more stylized. You know, you wanna put a little bit of life in it, put a little bit of yourself. So my pencil got a little dull there, so I went ahead and sharpened it up. And uh, now I'm adjusting values here and there. Uh, adding in details, erasing things out that maybe maybe I thought worked but didn't. Always adjusting right down to the very end until you decide to put uh, your name on it. And so there's my version of John Malkovich as Hercule Poirot. I would love it if you would put down in the comments, let me know who it is that you would like to draw or who you do like to draw, whether it's an actor, actress, musician, family member, historical figure, someone who uh, changed the course of the world. Let me know who you like to draw and why. Uh, it's always fascinating to find that out. And uh, as always, I thank you for tuning in, for subscribing, for sharing. 
I'm having a ball. I hope you are too. And I hope you learned something along the way. Anyways, time to turn the lights off and close up shop for another night. As always, I'll see you down the road.